Good morning. I'd like to call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearing of May 25th, 2017. The first item is on a joint petition by Landmark Center, Park Drive, LLC, and the Boston Redevelopment Authority for the discontinuance of any and all rights to travel the public may have had within a portion of Brookline Avenue, Boston proper. Located on its northwestly side, generally northeast of Park Drive, Boylston Street. This was new business on April 13th, 2017. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Discontinuance, 201 Brookline Avenue, Boston proper, one sheet dated March 6th, 2017. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Abe Menzen with Samuels and Associates. And Bill Dillon with Goulson and Stores, and uh, we're joined by the project engineer, VHB. So we'll give you a quick overview. I think we did this a couple of weeks ago, but um, um, we are redeveloping the Landmark Center. The first phase of the project is uh, a public park. So we're taking the Best Buy parking lot, uh, which is at the corner of Park Drive and Brookline Ave, and converting that to green space. So it'll be a really beautiful public park. Uh, we've been able to vacate the existing tenants from that part of the building. Uh, we'll be tenanting that over time with uh, food uses and really creating an active environment on that side of the building, uh, trying to complement a lot of the work that the Muddy River, uh, the federal government and the DCR have done, uh, and the city have done uh, in the Muddy River restoration project. So really creating park on both sides of, uh, of the project. So this is a uh, plan showing uh, the site plan uh, we'll be creating the park here. It's about 1.1 acres. It's about the size of Post Office Square Park. Uh, it'll be um, uh, really a lot of good infrastructure to have active events and programming and create a lot of uh, life. Um, we're also creating um, improvements here that were all part of the original approvals when we went through Article 80 and have been coordinated with DCR. Uh, we're uh, modifying our curb cuts to be consistent with the current uh, roadway configuration that uh, DCR uh, has built or the Army Corps has built on uh, Park Drive and creating a better link between the train station uh, and the project, trying to avoid uh, the current situation where people are cutting through uh, the parking lot um, at uh, the Bed Bath and Beyond side of the site, uh, creating a multi-use path from the train station across our property uh, in this direction um, and extending the landscaping all the way around the site down Brookline Ave. We'll, we'll have new retailers going in there over time as well and we've really put a lot of uh, attention into that streetscape trying to alleviate some pinch points on Brookline Ave, uh, alleviate the diff uh, grade differentials between the sidewalk and the, and the storefronts. Um, so a couple renderings just to show you what that looks like. Uh, this is uh, a rendering of the park from the front of the building. Uh, we've been working with the Parks Department and the, BR, the BPDA and uh, Landmarks Commission to create a design that um, creates areas for people to sit, hang out, also reflects the design of the uh, park system on the other side of the street, so mirroring a lot of the types of plantings and uh, site design elements as well. This is another rendering of the park uh, looking out towards Park Drive. And this is a rendering of Brookline Ave um, showing a lot of landscaping and streetscape improvements here as well. speak to the uh, uh, discontinuance portion. We've been working closely with the BPDA on the, uh, the site. They're doing a demonstration project in conjunction with it. Since our new business meeting, they, the board has voted to approve that based on an appraisal that the BPDA had had commissioned, and they'll be conveying it to us um, sometime after this hearing um, with the land disposition agreement and the deed. Can you give us a uh, rundown on the assessment and how that is determined? Uh, so the 
BPDA commissioned a third party appraisal. We really had nothing to do with it. Um, there are some restrictions on the land. It's, uh, it's got some practical restrictions in terms of being in front of a historic building. Uh, there are deed restrictions on what can be done with the property, so it's limited to basically we can only build a kiosk on it uh, to activate the park. So this was actually a parking lot previous in the city of Boston parks. So actually, what happened? I'm asking a question. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the his, but going back to the beginning, the history was in 1941, uh, the city took some property. Um, Sears donated it. Obviously, this was the old Sears uh, warehouse. Sears donated it to the city. Uh, the roadway expansion never happened. Sears continued to use the property. When we bought the building, we inherited um, the building with a parking lot on the property and honestly, some leases that were even requiring the use of the parking lot. And we've spent bunch of time unwinding that, getting um, tenant lease modifications performed to uh, allow us the right to redevelop the parking lot. And who was the lease with? Uh, Staples was the... the no, no, no. With the city of Boston utilizing the city property. How was that? We, we don't know. And when, they have, when the prior owner redeveloped the property, somehow this all was just part of the site plan and it kind of got discovered over the Last couple of years. Okay. So the assessed value? I believe it's four hundred and thirty thousand. Appreciate the focus on the connection to the train station, which I know is something we talked about when you guys were here for new business. I assume there will be an LMI for all the work on the work line outside and uh, the park drive side. Uh, yes, uh, we believe that is uh, done. We've submitted a signed copy. Great. No questions or comments? Name your top. Members of the public. Tom, I'll entertain a motion. Motion on a joint petition by Landmark Center Park Drive LLC and the Boston Redevelopment Authority for the discontinuance of any and all rights to travel the public may have had within a portion of Brookline Avenue, Boston proper, located on its northwesterly side, generally northeast of Park Drive, Boylston Street, New Business 413, 2017, shown in a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, discontinuance 201 Brookline Avenue, Boston proper, one sheet dated March 6, 2017. Second call. Call better. The second item is on a petition by Landmark Center Park Drive LLC for the making of specific repairs within Brookline Avenue, Boston proper, located on its northwesterly side, southwest of Fullerton Street, Kilmarnock Street, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavers, street lights, street furniture, street trees, irrigation infrastructure, and storm drain infrastructure. This was new business on April 13th, 2017. This is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division. Specific repair plan, 201 Brookline Avenue, Boston proper, one sheet dated March 6, 2017. Good morning. Good morning. Bill Nichols, VHB. We are the civil engineer for the project. I just want to walk through the plan quickly with you. In addition to this, the proponent is also supporting the fire street safety groups along a portion of Brookline Avenue within the city of Boston jurisdiction. As noted on the plan, the DCR city of Boston So the improvements that we're showing are on the northwest side of Brookline Avenue. As shown, we're basically proposing to reconstruct the existing concrete sidewalk and provide a furnishing zone parallel to the curb line as well. Within the furnishing zone, street trees and bike, bike racks and permanent pavement will be installed. As a result, we're looking to push a small porting that curb to the east to accommodate for the furnishing zone and new, new sidewalk as well. Um, as David mentioned, over the past two or three months, we've been coordinating closely with a number of different agencies. And at this time, we have letters of support from the EPA, ISD. We have lost water source approval for this project as well. Uh, city street lighting department as well. And with that, I'd just like to thank you for your questions. How similar is this design to what's done on the Trilogy side of the street? 
Absolutely. The design is consistent with both the Van Ness trilogy and other sites within the Fenway. So that's been coordinated closely with Filler Rock through the Boston Water Sewer Site Plan Review process. Okay. So we have their approval, which we obtained in the past couple of weeks. Okay. Other questions or comments? Can you talk? No. Nope. the public. All right. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the petition by Landmark Center Park Drive LLC for the making of specific repairs within Brookline Avenue, Boston proper, located on its northwesterly side, southwest of Fullerton Street, Fullerton Street, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty paver, street lights, new street furniture, street trees, irrigation <coughs> infrastructure, and storm storm drain infrastructure. All is shown in the plan of the City of Boston Public Works Department. Engineering Division specific with plan 201 Brookline Avenue, Boston proper, one sheet dated March 6, 2017. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank, Thank you, you very much. The third item is on a petition by the Old Town Team Realty LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper consisting of the installation of new bollards. Yaki Way on its westerly side, generally south of Brookline Avenue. Brookline Avenue on its southeasterly side, generally northeast of Lansdowne Street. Lansdowne Street on its northerly side, generally east of Brookline Avenue. This was new business on May 11, 2017. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Yaki Way, Lansdowne Street, and Brookline Avenue, Boston, two sheets dated May 17, 2017. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dennis Quilty, attorney at McDermott Quilty and Miller, representing the Old Town Team Realty. With me is Laura Martin to my left from the Red Sox, and Kelly Carr from my extreme left of the Data Group. Um, thank you very much. As you know, we were here before you at uh, New Business. Uh, there were a few questions <clears throat> which arose, one of which we resolved, I think, the day of, which was the Comcast issue, reducing a number of bollards on the um, Lands down street uh, part of the application. The other question that came up was whether we had made outreach to the Cask and Flagon, whose business is on the corner where these ballers, some of them are placed. I, I have had multiple conversations with Mr. Dana Van Fleet, who is uh, a side issue a client of mine. Uh, I showed him the plans, went over the plans with him. He had no objections. He Once he observed that they were obviously outside of his gated patio area, uh, and, and when he realized for the first time that across the street, the very same bollards exist in front of other establishments, uh, he, was, he was more than happy to say, if, I, if, if the commission would require a letter, I can get one, but I, I've had these conversations over the last week or so with him. Um, so as, uh, you know, as to the rest of it, these, of course, are the similar safety bollards that the commission has approved in other areas around the park, uh, pretty much the same as these are exactly the same. So one of the other questions that I had was the Major League Baseball, basically what the spec specification is on the security specification, whereas we're putting these bollards in, but yet we have frontages on the ballpark on Ipswich Street and Van Ness that go un unprotected. I mean, what's I think, the policy? I think as we suggested last time, it's kind of a, it's a continuing process of trying to secure the entire area, and I think what's happened is they've just tried to pick off those areas which are the most obvious uh, to start there, but I think the entire park will be in, in stages uh, protected in the same fashion. I would, I would figure they do an overall assessment though, right? Um, well, currently they're working on the streets now and putting barriers on the streets, and so they're, they are focusing on Brookline, but they are putting barriers at the other end. So, and we do have the bollards at all the gates. So we, that was the main plan was, the first thing was to protect Fenway Park itself at the gates. And so we methodically kind of moved along and now we're doing the streets. There's another issue which came up which it looks like on the plans you guys have uh, addressed, which is the, the space on Yaki Way. Talk a little bit to that. 
Yes, that's right. What we did is we ended up shifting the bollards a little bit, so we had one, one more bollard behind the curb, and that gave us more room in the parallel, and then we put a note that said minimum of three feet, but it's actually more than that. And that was for the Commission for Persons with Disabilities? Yes, and the other thing we did um, that the Disabilities Commission wanted was to um, widen the bollards at the sidewalk at Lansdowne, and so that has a seven-foot spacing. You know, in previous phases, there's been input from Boston Police, EMS, fire. Did they have a chance to uh, look at these plans? Um, I believe they have not. It would probably be a good idea to float them out to them because they're the responders. I need to make sure that from a public safety point of view, they're comfortable with it. Yes. Thanks. Other questions or comments? Name your top. That was the public. All entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the petition by Old Town Team Realty LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of the installation of new bollards. All is read into the record by the chair and is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Yaki Way, Lansdowne Street, in Brookline at Boston, two sheets dated May 17, 2017, with the caveat that you get with the uh, first responders to review the uh, plan. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. The fourth item is on a petition by the Harvard Business School for the acceptance of pedestrian easement adjacent to Western Ave, Brighton, located on the southerly side, generally between Riverdale Street and Spur Street. This was new business on May 11, 2017. This is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Pedestrian Easement, 230 Western Ave, Brighton, one sheet dated May 2017. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. I'm Peter Kohansky from Coolston and Stores. I'm here on behalf of Harvard Business School uh, on two petitions that relate to improvements proposed for the Western Avenue sidewalk in front of Teal Hall uh, of the Business School, which is located between Riverdale Street and uh, Spur Street in Brighton. With me is Paul Deedle from HBS, uh, John Schmidt from Niche Engineering, and Adrian Nile and He Young Lee from Reed Hildebrand, the landscape architects are here as well. The first petition is, is for the city to accept the pedestrian easement to widen the Western Avenue sidewalk. Harvard would retain rights to the subsurface and air rights above the uh, narrow easement area for utilities and, and overhangs, and then would grant a pedestrian easement to ensure pedestrian travel. Um, if I could, I'll turn it over to Paul. He'll give you a quick description of the Teal Hall project, and then John can talk about the easement area. Peter, good morning. Uh, Paul Deedle, Director of Capital Programs with HBS Operations. Uh, this project is essentially a continuation of the streetscape improvements that were performed previously, I think three years ago, in front of 224 Western Ave, which is the Harvard Ceramics Lab. This is a uh, design that was uh, presented to the uh, uh, institutional master plan and approved, so no change in design from what was done in front of 224. For the reason we're doing it now, we are renovating the exterior facade of uh, 230 Western Ave, which is Teal Hall administration building for HBS, so it made sense to do the work at that point in time while the building is under construction. And oh, John? Yeah, the easement runs from Riverdale Street to the end of this parcel. It, it's with a barrier between one and a half to two and a half feet. It provides a five-foot-wide concrete accessible sidewalk for public use. And this also provides space for the relocated bus stop. That relocated bus stop has been coordinated with the MBTA? It has, and according to Joe Bagan, Bagan and the Harvard Planning, um, that everything is worked out. Let's make up for the next item, but uh, is there a bus shelter there? Is there a deco bus shelter there? There is a bus shelter there now that falls somewhere in this area here. Yep. We're actually bringing it more into the parcel. Okay. It's been shifted it over about Do you know if it's a Deco bus shelter? It's a Deco style, uh, one of the... It's a closed bus shelter. shelter. Yes. Okay. 
other questions or comments? Thank you, Todd. All right, that was the public. Right, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion uh, to approve the petition by Harvard Business School for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to Western Ave, Brighton, located on the southeast of east side, generally between Riverdale Street and Spur Street. New business on 5-11-2017. Shared on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division. Pedestrian easement 230 Western Ave, Brighton. One sheet dated May 2017. Second. Aye. Aye. So moved. The next item is on a petition by Harvard Business School for the making of specific repairs within Western Avenue, Brighton, located on the southerly side, generally between Riverdale Street and Spur Street, consisting of curb, sidewalk, and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavers, street lights, street furniture, street trees, landscaping, irrigation infrastructure, and driveway curb cuts. This was new business on May 11, 2017. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plans, Teal Hall Streetscape, 230 Western Ave, Boston, five sheets, dated March 2017. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Peter Kohansky again for Harvard Business School. Uh, this is the companion petition to the last one uh, for the approval of the specific repairs. Uh, so the, the reconstruction of the sidewalk will uh, reflect what was recently approved and constructed for 230 Western Ave, its uh, budding parcel. It will provide a six foot wide concrete sidewalk, a five foot wide pervious paver. Um, five new street trees and new street lighting. It is in compliance with the Boston Police Street Guidelines. And they're coming through there, they're going through the campus. Is there a proposed crosswalk to bring them across the street at that point? No. No, this no there's is, not. No, this, this here is essentially ideally for the bus stop, because the bus will stop here and provide accessible right. access. Obviously, you don't look like insurgents. Yeah. If, they're provi if we're providing a desire line, basically, they're going to come through and they're going to go to mid block. Desire line, so you know that that walk. Yep. Peter and I with Reed Hildebrand. I think the walk that you're referring to is a walk uh, between the building and the sidewalk zone, and that's for shortcutting from the sidewalk zone to the building entry to accommodate the pedestrian the entrance, is here. The entrance in the middle. And it's also part of a larger language of how the sidewalks were divided up at ceramics, so there's a design piece to it as well. That's, that's cool. The, the, the concern on BTD's part is creating a pedestrian desire line that brings you to a point that basically makes you want to cross the street at that point. So we try to, we try to make the pathways to the, the crosswalks. Mm -hmm. Just a point, you know, when you when future design, when you're creating pedestrian desire lines, make sure they're ending up in the right place. What is what is the new distance roughly going to be between the new bus stop, the relocated bus stop, and essentially the two crosswalks? You're worried about mid-block mid -block crossing from the bus stop. Oh, let me hear it again. This is the
this for future. Oh, that's all. Thanks. Yep. Other questions or comments? Members of the public. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by Harvard Business School for the making of specifics and repairs within Western Avenue. Right, all is right into the record by the chair, and consisting of curb, sidewalk, pedestrian ramp, reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specially paved street, light street, furniture, street trees, landscaping, irrigation structure, and driveway curb cuts. All is shown as a set of plans entitled the City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repairs Plan, Teal Hall, Streetscape 230 Western Avenue, Boston, five sheets dated March 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, thank, so you. Thank, thank you. you. The next item is on a petition by Forest Properties Company for the making of specific repairs within Clearway Street, Roxbury, located on its northerly side, generally between Massachusetts Avenue and Dalton Street, consisting of sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new, relocated, and removed street trees, uh, planters, landscaping, and ornamental tree fences. This was new business on May 11th, 2017. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair, Repair Plan. Clearway Street, Back Bay, two sheets dated April 27th, 2017. Good morning. Good morning. This proposal uh, has to do with the existing street trees uh, along the northerly side of Clareway. It's currently 15 trees, uh, two Two are missing, one is in um, ill repair. Uh, we'll be replacing those. And then working uh, to enhance the, the tree wells currently. There's just a small opening in the, in the brick sidewalk with a small granite band. We're gonna punch that out to about four by eight, maintaining at least five feet from our, any, uh, any obstructions, which is the, the building itself uh, along that. Um, we'll put, we're going to put a, a landscape uh, black uh, metal fence around it, two feet high. Uh, there, um, Parks and uh, Recreation wanted a section of that to be removable, so that's been updated on the plan. And then there'll be some vegetation uh, uh, added, in plant enhancements around, around the tree itself, and we worked with parks again to make sure that that wasn't going to be detrimental to the to the tree root systems. Um, uh, we'll have to peel back some of the sidewalk brick to, to do this and we're going to band it with just a, the same Boston brick wire cut uh, just in a uh, in a surround pattern to match into the existing patterns. Uh, we will enter into a, an LMI for maintenance of all of these uh, these improvements. I think Commissioner Hesford asked about this before, but the the curb the curb uh, rules on that side of the street. Is there parking on that side? Of the street? No, no parking on that side of the street, so there won't be any interference on the, with the uh, with that. Sounds like you have, but you've received support from the Parks Department. Yes. Yes. Other questions or comments? Any other time? Members of the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve petition by Forest Properties Company for the making of specific pairs between Clearway Street, Roxbury, located on its northerly side, <clears throat> generally between Mass Ave. Dalton Street, consisting of sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new relocated and removed street trees, planters, landscaping, ornamental tree fences. New business, 5-11-2017. As shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Pacific Repair Plan, Clearway Street, Back Bay. Two sheets dated April 27, 2017. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you very much. Thank you.
seventh item is on a petition by Unique Concepts LLC for the granting of a sidewalk cafe license for seasonal outdoor seating within Washington Street, Boston proper. Located on us northwestly side, southwest of West Newton Street, and consisting of seating for 32 persons and approximately 370 square feet within the public way. This was new business on May 11, 2017. This is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Sidewalk Cafe Plan, 35 West Newton Street, Boston, Mass, 02118, one sheet dated May 4th, 2017. Good morning. Yeah, I'm, my name is uh, Jim Pyatt with Pyatt Associates. I'm the architect uh, representing and working on the project for Unique Concepts. And the petition pretty much states that we want to provide 32 seats on an outdoor cafe on a reasonably wide sidewalk. Um, service will be mostly self-service with cleanup by staff. Um, not sure what else to say about it. Any community input uh, on the proposal? Um, well, we've, been, we've talked to numerous groups. Uh, Washington Gateway Project, I think there's a representative back here from there. Um, we've talked to neighbors in the past. Um, and the construction's been ongoing, so um, I think people are aware of what we're trying to do. Do you have anything you want to add? Uh, sure. Hi. I'm Jennifer Efron, Director of Washington Gateway Main Street, and um, we've been working with this uh, restaurant and their architects for um, several months, probably going on over a year now, and we um, are largely, hugely in support of their uh, outdoor seating. I think it's going to help bring attention to the restaurant, and it's um, in a really great location to attract foot traffic, safety, it's right near a park, so we're really looking forward to having some evening activity and some really positive activity going on that, and we're really excited to be working with them and support this proposal. Excellent, thank you for the testimony. Also, I believe, Todd, you have letters of support, which I for right from the local. We received letters of support from neighborhood groups and also the various Office of Family Services. Other questions or comments? Todd, other members of the public, please. Hi, and um, my name is Tony Crothall, and I'm here to represent the Blackstone Franklin Neighborhood Association. And like Jennifer, we're, uh, we canvass the neighborhood, and there is huge support for this project. This uh, restaurant is right between Toro and Stella, totally underserviced outdoor space. Um, we find people heading to those restaurants really early just to get there. And we just love that it brings so much vibrancy to Washington Street. Thank you. Other comments? Sorry, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve a petition by Unique Concepts LLC for the granting of a sidewalk cafe license for seasonal outdoor seating within Washington Street. Boston Proper, located on its south, northwesterly side, southwest of West Newton Street, and consisting of seating for 32 persons and approximately 370 square feet within the public way. New business, 5-11-2017, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Sidewalk Cafe Plan, 35 West Newton Street, Boston, Mass, 02118, one sheet dated May 4, 2017. All in favor? Thank you. Our first item of new business, Seaport Boulevard, South Boston, specific repairs on a petition by Seaport Square Development Company, LLC. Chairman, members of the Commission, uh, Peter Kohansky from Gold Simmons Stores. I'm here on behalf of Seaport Square Development Company, uh, which is the master developer of the Seaport Square project in South Boston. Um, I'm joined by Amy Prange from SSDC, Brian Beisel from Howard Stein Hudson is here, and John Schmidt from Niche Engineering. We are seeking uh, approval of further changes to the specific repairs for the median in Seaport Boulevard. This is the stretch of Seaport Boulevard between Sleeper Street and East Service Road. You'll remember at the public hearing two weeks ago, the commission approved the geometry of the medians, um, along with pedestrian ramps, street lights, irrigation and traffic signal infrastructure. But we asked to come back to you for approval of the landscaping uh, and street furniture within the 
median. So the plans submitted for this action are now the, the complete design for the medians. Um, and I should just say, as we've described to you, Seaport Square Development Company, um, as the new master developer of the Seaport Square project, has engaged in a design exercise to really try to uh, improve the pedestrian experience within Seaport Square um, along Seaport Boulevard while making sure that Seaport Boulevard re retains its importance as a, as a car and, and truck route. So uh, we hope this design accomplishes that. And I'll turn it over to, to John. Uh, good morning. So this, uh, the project team met with, uh, last Thursday afternoon, met with the, uh, members of the BPDA, the Parks Department Disabilities Commission, to review the design that's before you today. And we have their blessing, so that everyone in those departments is on board with what we're proposing. Uh, just to give you a brief overview, it's the scale back Step back. Those those granite blocks. What what, what are those for? No, not the not yeah. the tip. Here, and the, the, the same here. What? There will serve as foundation for a future art, public art. In the median. In the median. The blocks that have upgraded our colleges. The next block. Same idea. We're going to be encouraging people to walk along the median? No. no. The arts are designated right at the crosswalk, so as people cross, they wait and they can walk. Also, for people So it's, it's only going to be at that point? Yes. It's so it's right at the visibility point at the crosswalk? Here and here. So it's, it's just our platforms for an art scheme that has to be developed with the City of Boston Arts Department. We realize we have a long way to go before we actually can put any art there. No, I understand. Yeah. And, and we don't. The crosswalk, there's a piece of art blocking your visibility for oncoming traffic. That's assuming that the art is tall enough to block your visibility, which is hasn't anything, really. Is there a policy that's going to prohibit that? Like I Give said, specifics? we will be working with the arts department to put together our strategy. That needs to be done before we approve something like this. This is well, the art. Not yeah, no, the art is a. It's going to be temporary installations that are going to change over time, and this is just the platform for the art to sit on. Um, since we're doing all the medium work now, we wanted to get the so infrastructure in. How high, high, how high is that uh, granite block? Granite block will sit about 12 to 18 inches above grade, and then the art will be just the top. Mm -hmm. No. Right at the crosswalk. Come on. That's, that's, like, that's vision zero, you know, direct opposition of what we're trying to do. I, I, I think we should. I think we should come back. I, I do understand the concern. I think we should. We should think about that and, and come back. Um, with an idea for how, you know, ha how to make sure that sight lines and visibility is maintained with, with our, I think we, I really we have an answer. I think there has to be a policy, yep. you know, what we're doing here. And on the third block, we have uh, more of the uh, art displays and built with trees and the vegetation. John, on that page? I think it's that page. Uh, is that where North Harbor, uh, 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 Harbor Street comes in? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Can you just talk a little bit about how that street connects with sort of the, what is the current curve alignment? Sure. If that's later in the presentation, that's fine. So as we see here, we're 
developing a digital master plan um, to connect the buildings north of Seaport Boulevard with the buildings south of Seaport Boulevard. Um, so it's just going to be empty conduit for future use. But since we're going to be ripping up the street now, we don't have to come back and do it later. So at this point, we'll put them in, we'll sell the ends, and we'll have this planning to have plaques added to the impacts. And if it helps, have some photos or renderings here. So it's, uh, so yeah, this is the intersection, uh, the typical cross, the UK cross, you have the crosswalk here, you have the concrete landing, you have the dustful detector, uh, strips, uh, raised granite curbing, some cobbles, some low uh, vegetation, and then we have the foundation for the yard display. The idea of the yard display would be here, but we're very sensitive to site mine issues that will be evaluated as the arts develops. In every instance, is the art start behind the stop line? Hmm. Yes, it is. We don't want pedestrian distraction or driver distraction. We won't look at the RV. <laughs> <laughs> How is ownership of that? Like, it looks like we have some utilities and maybe other type of utilities, like removal and reset of things like that in terms of access. Like, is that done by the uh, the, the, the LMI that is developed? There's a, a master LMI agreement for the Seaport Square infrastructure. Um, SSDC as the master developer is the is the licensee under that. The city uh, knows that this is the one party to, to go to when there are issues relating to all these improvements. There will also be a plaque stating that this is a private utility for us on the sidewalk. Yeah, and I'm just curious. I, I know I think there's like an M1, M2 parcel of site plans. I think we're in with the commission and possibly approved or in the process. Is this kind of coordinated with? Yeah, that's like. Uh, M1 and 2 block is here. It picks up. It's all part of the Seaport Square Master Development, and it has to share the same LMI as the rest mm -hmm. of the development. Right, so, so the elements that are within uh, uh, the, the, the streetscape uh, are coordinated. They may be built out by private developers of a, of a parcel, but things that fall within the purview of the LMI are the master developer of Seaport Square, and it's all coordinated. It seems like there should be a, just an interim conversation with you guys, the Art Commission, and BTD about how we think about the programming, sort of the, the art curation that is going to happen to make sure that it is both advancing the public realm objectives while preserving the, our, yep. our safety objectives. Yep, yep, yep. we're uh, sensitive to that. Yep. Right. I appreciate that. And between now and, uh, and the public hearing is figuring out how North Harbor, sort of representing uh, the North Harbor Street crossing in a way that uh, makes sort of egress from that street. Just show the future street on the plan, pretty much. I think it would be helpful just to yeah. have a sense of yeah. how, how does this actually connect? How, how does that, that crosswalk yeah. or the median actually yeah. uh, get people across safely? Yeah, we landed the pedestrian ramp on the south side to align with Harbor Way, which is yep. entirely pedestrian, so we wanted that to be as center as possible, and then Absolutely. we landed on the on sidewalk the north. north. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And if that has to bend or is offset or... Other questions or comments? Are you done? Yep. Members of the public? All right. Two weeks will be enough then? Yeah. All right. See you guys uh, on the 25th. Thank you. Uh, uh, sorry. The second item of new business is David Ortiz Drive, Boston Proper, specific repairs on a petition by Old Town uh, Team Realty LLC. Dennis Colty again representing the uh, Old Town Team Realty with me, Lauren Martin of the Red Sox, and Mark Youngins from uh, Vanessa Hanks. The uh, matter before you is a um, continuation, actually, of uh, permissions previously granted. Uh, my memory is 2013 for the first set of retired uh, player numbers, street furniture icons on what was then Yawkey Way. Uh, the westerly side crossing Brookline Avenue, and now, thanks to the action of the commission, renamed David Ortiz Drive. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, one of the uh, numbers which we hope to place in this new area is 
number 34 honoring David Ortiz. Um, and there would be a um, place for, we're requesting four locations uh, so that future retired members would be uh, eligible, if you will, for placement. Um, so it's a very similar program to that which the commission has previously approved. Um, this it has been vetted. Uh, they, they meet on a regular basis with the neighborhood. People, Ms. Martin is uh, actively involved in those meetings, so this has been the subject of discussions with the neighbors, and we've heard no objections that we're aware of at this point in time. Well, we did have, uh, there was, and uh, Mr. Youngins uh, worked uh, closely with the Commission for Persons with Disabilities. There was a question raised there. We had a site meeting with they and BPDA, uh, which led to a, an agreement to, as to what we're presenting today. We updated the design based on comments from the BPDA, um, kind of the placement of the new numbers, and then the Disabilities Commission, who uh, we actually made a substantial change to allow more free space on the sidewalk by carrying it down a little further. I can walk you through the plan unless you think it's That's straightforward enough. That'd be great, actually. Okay. Um, this is. This is actually one of the um, renderings that was presented back in 2004 of the, the theme of what was to be placed. And actually, it was just like this in the field. Uh, it is along existing David Ortiz Way. Uh, the numbers are either, um, three of the numbers are on the closer to the street where there is a wall, a great transition, and the uh, balance of the numbers are on the back of the sidewalk. They're you know, about uh, just under five feet. Showing it close up, it's, uh, it's a metal frame with a uh, plastic lit up um, number face. And then the plan that you have in front of you. There is an existing um, maintenance area that has been extended to wrap around the corner and grab the new number location. So uh, the Red Sox are responsible for maintenance of the sidewalk area where the numbers are. And of course, the use of the numbers is a space specific. Providing uh, 11 feet clear uh, all the way along here, uh, which from the disability submission point of view is uh, an acceptable final design. So the four additional locations are also down by the train station side, away yes, from Brooklyn yeah. Ave. And uh, are you proposing to build the foundation and wait for the number, or do you keep it level until? Uh, no, each number has its own need as far as how wide the foundation is. So it's really, uh, if the conduits may be extended from yeah. the sidewalk, so we can limit how much has to be torn up in the future, but no, not until the numbers are Any questions or comments? So, so on the lighting, these, these are lit? They're internally lit. Right. So basically, what are you installing, like a uh, interconnect system for future use? Uh, yes. They're actually powered, and probably one of the conductors that are conductors will only extend the last day. Um, the number of power comes from uh, the existing sign up in the street because the junction lights there. So it's not safe power. Um, so it's going to a manual. The up here is. It's, no, it's just pull boxes in the conductor. Yeah, but where is the power source coming from? Uh, it's from coming from the power to this sign. It's through a junction box in the sign. Where the sign comes from, I can look into that. Yeah, just, just for when you come back, just give me a manhole number, that's all. Alright. Other questions or comments? Thank you, Todd. That was the public. Uh, just one point on, on the interconnect. How long is the interconnect? Is it already in? The interconnect was 
Actually, the Intertech was included, I believe, as part of the UA or overall. It was in one or the other. I don't figure out which one. It's not like we're going out there and going to take out the whole thing. Well, this is within the sidewalk. I would think the interconnects to the street. I can figure that. I can find that out. Right. We have the, yes. the, the point I'm trying to make is that in order to basically fire up these things, we don't have to relay an interconnect system to provide the electrical services. It's already yet. It's already it's already extended to here. We're just going to continue it down. It'll actually, be here. So, so you're looking to extend that? No, how how much? Onto the system, probably another 60 feet. Is that part of the petition? To extend the conduit? Yeah. Well, it's, 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 I, a, it's an electrical conduit, not well, a communications when we, conduit. When we break out the the items that will be included in the specific repair, the laying of that conduit will be amongst it. Right. Yeah, it's, a, I mean, it's a brand new roadway, so that, that's the point. June 8th, that's fine. Great. See you guys in two weeks. Thank you. The third item of new business is 569 Tremont Street, Boston proper, a sidewalk cafe license on a petition by Aquitaine Bar, Paul Veen, uh, Bistro. Located at uh, 569 Tremont Street, petitions the board for roughly 155 square foot patio sitting in front of the restaurant proper, um, offering 10 cafe seats. I'm sorry, can you inter introduce yourself? I'm sorry. No, My fine. name is Christopher Gleon. I'm the director of operations and managing partner for the Aquitaine Restaurant Group. years, um, Aquitaine has been trying to get a patio. Um, it's always had neighborhood support. Um, the condo association was always um, kind of the stumbling block and um, our relationship has changed. The condo association's turned over and they're 100%. They've actually approved a larger patio, but working with the, within the departments, what we feel is most appropriate is this 10 seat, 155 split patio. Have we received a letter from the condo association? Or yes, do you have a letter? Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, the existing uh, benches, what happens with them? Um, one of the benches is going away. The other one is staying. Um, it uh, People waiting for the bus enjoy sitting down on them. I just don't see it reflect. I see it in the picture, but I don't. Just lay that on the overall. Yeah, absolutely. Basically, I just want to, from a circulation point of view, certainly. Did you provide a uh, pedestrian level of service? I did. Who did that? VPE. Anything I had asked is the wave or our catch basin structure, um, just for awareness that we have facilities nearby that are occasionally maintained. Uh, back of the truck that pulls up to the catch basin. waiting for, I think, the 43 bus to sit on your benches right now? Pardon me, sir? A number of people who are waiting for the bus there sit on your benches right now? Um, occasionally, occasionally they do. I know the Condo Association really, you know, did something that they enjoy and asked that one of the stipulations that the Condo Association asked that we don't go past where it's drawn there. Right. They, want, they don't want us to approach their door, and it was something that was really uh, agreed upon and was instrumental in getting their support. Uh, if it is of interest, we can talk it through. Would you have any objection to relocating the second bench, the one that you're going to get rid of, to another place along Tremont Street for folks who may be waiting? 
Um, if the I'd be more than happy to do it if it you know if the city allows me to do it. It's I'd be it. happy to do it. Right. Something we can talk about. Other questions or comments? Thank you, Todd. Yeah. Members of the public. All right. Two weeks enough time. Pardon me, sir. Is two weeks enough time for you to come back for the public? Oh comment? yeah, absolutely. Great. See you okay. on June eighth. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. The fourth item is Sleeper Street, Seaport Boulevard, South Boston, discontinuances on a petition by the City of Boston Parks and Recreation Department. Good morning. Good morning, Liza. I'm Liza Meyer. I'm with the City of Boston Parks Department, here with Howard Moser from the PHB to present the uh, request for discontinuance for uh, land that will um, help assemble the parcel that's being designed to develop into Martins Park, also known as Children's Wharf Park. Uh, we came a few months ago with, for specific repairs, so um, now this is the discontinuance request. Um, just briefly to orient you, um, this is the park design. Um, the area is this part of the parcel. This part of the park is an ETA owned, being made in the city. The discontinuances are around to this side of the park, uh, several, several parcels which power will go through, and then the park also extends over Describing the four discontinuances in great detail. Um, the four discontinuances total 7,863 square feet. Um, uh, the notifications have gone out. Uh, a lot of positive response from many of the agencies. No comments from utility providers. We're working with BWSC on securing the rights to their facilities and working through all the different conveyances and multi-agency development. Questions or comments? UTV has looked at this and I think it's a great design and uh, appreciate the efforts on behalf of the project. Okay, the commission, as you mentioned, like, just want to see this happen. We just want to make sure we have rights to our, our uh, storm drain outfall. Um, it's in our legal team to kind of try to get some answers to you, coordinate the easement work. Um, you know, our main concerns are we have an existing easement for the portion of the MBTA land. When that's transferred, I guess, to public works and then, and then over to parks or however that's going to happen, that easement would likely go away. We need, you know, that combined with the additional discontinuance area, sorting that all out. Uh, if it's going to be like an easement from gross, documented on the recording um, or some type of meets and bounds, it's really the main thing you know, we want to kind of iron out. Any correspondent, like how is the MBTA involved in this in terms of silver line utilities? They have no oil grease separators. Uh, yeah, same well, condition, like figuring out easements. Yep, we're working on that um, right now as well. So they'll have an easement for there's the silver line tunnel, and then as you just flagged, the oil water separator and the associated manholes and vent um, that come with that system. So all that'll be uh, part of that conveyance. Two weeks be enough time to work out the water and sewer easement. Yeah, we'll definitely work on it over these two weeks. Good, good, good. good job for how we do. Our fifth item of new business, Rainer Circle, Brook Marshall Road, Sojourner Truth Court, Kerr Place, DeWitt uh, Drive, Shaman Avenue, Ruggles Street, Easterbrook Road, Esterbrook Road, Roxbury, specific repairs, and a petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department. Good morning. Uh, I'm Zach Wasmuth from Boston Public Works Department, and I'm joined by Steve Farr from Niche Engineering. We're here to present uh, plans that we have for a uh, collection of streets in the Madison Park area in Roxbury um, that the city is proposing to 
reconstruct, um, new sidewalks, roadway uh, reconstruction, street trees, street lighting, and also some uh, curb extensions. I'll uh, hand it over to Steve to go over some of the specifics. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, just brought up an aerial photograph of the site just to orient. This is the Reggie Lewis track arena right here, Tremont Street, Boston Tick headquarters, and only Gas Boulevard, so the Madison Park neighborhood is, is within that area there. I highlighted the streets in orange here, so that you can see them. they're all residential streets, and as Zach pointed out, the work really just entails very simply curb realignments, so pump outs to reduce crosswalk lengths, through the pedestrian ramps, and some resurfacing of these roadways. Very minor uses the street lighting as well. That's basically what I think that. I believe our BTD's review, we've, we've got the uh, comments to you, Zach. Correct. We're pretty much all set with that as far as the signage, street names, crosswalks. Right. Anything else you need from us? Um, no, I think I just sent one final check set to you guys, but I think last time you just had one comment and that's been addressed. So. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about how this will connect with the Ruggles project, the Whittier Street project, and the Cast project that are all to come? Yes, exactly. I mean, this has kind of been a, a first um, project and, and a series of projects that, that are happening. The Whittier uh, project, uh, the BHA project over there, um, Here, the new streets being developed as part of that project, and also the city will be taking on in the future um, some street escape improvements along the uh, large portion of the park street in that corner. Okay, if, uh, we've been in touch, uh, it's consistent with the current construction. Uh, we just continue to coordinate to get the water sewer drain work done prior to uh, moving in. But I the, the last correspondence that I haven't been able to follow up on was the concern about the, the site work on the width, and uh, I think there were some structures in question with drainage. Um, did we, I, I, I didn't follow up you know, on that. Is there a need to follow up with? Is there a concern with the site works uh, um, driveway entrance? Or, or? Yeah, I don't think so, but um, we can we can circle back, check up on that, and we can um, we can make sure that. Uh, any of those concerns are addressed. I, I don't think it's a big deal, but it's just something that we should just check back on for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions or comments? I'm here, John. I'm just calling. Two weeks enough time for you guys? Yeah. Right. Yeah, your name? So our final item, I want to ask uh, Chong Liu to give us an update on the uh, specific repair LMI. Sure. Um, my name is Chong Liu, and I'm the legal counsel for this board about two weeks ago. And um, the PIC asked me to look into revise the license agreement and uh, to reflect to address certain concerns. And we heard over the course of the business. Uh, I had uh, two meetings with Amy and Todd and uh, Steve, Eric. They gave me a lot. Uh, great ideas and uh, the agreement making a lot of the to progress. We're targeting that in operation for new business for drone A's. Um, so and we'll do a final to go around and then we'll be Terrific. in operation. Look forward to seeing you on June 8th about it. Thank you. Right, thank you. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Okay.